Hi, this is Thomas LeFeau from the Instructional Media Center, and in this tutorial, we will be discussing the different types of charts that are available in Microsoft Excel. The charting tools in Excel are designed to display tabular information in visual and meaningful ways. By clicking on the Insert tab, you can see the different charts that are available. Clicking on either of these options will then give you additional information on how you want your data to be displayed. In this case, I'm going to select a range that I want to chart. Then click on Column, and now I see my options. 2D, 3D, Cylinder, Cone, and Pyramid only describe the way the actual columns will appear. Hovering your mouse over each of these pictures will give you information on how it will actually chart the data. These types are clustered, stacked, and 100% stacked. In this example, the clustered chart would give me individual columns for each year's attendance and cluster them together according to the software type. If I change the chart type to stacked, it would total all of the year's attendance, sort them by workshop, and color the different areas of the columns to represent how the different years added to that total. Now if I change this to 100% stacked, it displays the information in percentages. In this chart we would see which year contributed the most to the overall total. Now a 100% stacked chart doesn't really present this information in a meaningful fashion. So instead of showing how the years contributed to the overall total, we can use the chart options in the ribbon to switch the column and row information. This essentially flips which data is charted on which axis, now showing the totals for each year and how the different software programs contributed to those totals. While we have this data charted, I want to show you where you can edit which areas of your spreadsheet are included in your chart. By clicking Select Data, I have the options to edit where this chart is getting its information. If I select Adobe InDesign and click Edit, I can see that the series name is being pulled in from the spreadsheet, and if I click on the series values, I can see the data it's including in this chart. I did not include the workshop attendance heading or the years because it would have thrown off the scale of the chart. So Excel just numbered the columns 1 through 3. By clicking Edit over the axis labels, I can select the range of years. And by clicking OK, you will now see that the columns are correctly numbered by year. Now let's look at line charts. In this example I have a table that compares the number of workshops we offered on each program and the total number of attendees. If I select this range, go to the Insert tab, and choose the line chart, I can choose which chart I want. Depending on the number of your data points, you may want to choose a line chart with or without markers. In this case, there are only six points, so I'll add the markers to this. Now the problem with this data is that everything is being counted on the same axis. The lower workshop numbers send that line to the bottom, while the higher attendance numbers extend that line toward the top. To even this out and give this chart a little more meaning, I can plot the workshop numbers on a separate axis. When I click on the line representing the number of workshops, I can right click and select Format Data Series. From this first option that appears, I can choose Secondary Axis, click OK, and now I can see which workshops were offered too often and which workshops needed to be offered more often. Right now the chart is kind of squeezed in by this legend being shown at the right. To change positions and add titles to charts, select the Layout tab under your Chart Tools. 
Remember that the Chart Tools tabs only appear when a chart is selected. In the Legend menu, I'll select Show Above Chart or Show Legend at Top. I can also add a title above the chart. Adding axis labels is also easy. Here I can click on Axis Titles, select the primary horizontal axis, and I can label this Software. Axis titles can also be added to the primary and secondary vertical axes. A rotated title fits best. Charts can be expanded by grabbing these handles here at the side. And you can see that making this chart just a little bit larger gives it more room for all of the words to be seen. Excel 2007 has many new chart designs. Under the Design tab, you'll see some of these designs listed. For instance, if you were using this chart in a PowerPoint presentation, you could use one of the styles with the black background and the white writing. Once you find the style that suits you, simply copy and paste your chart into your presentation. To customize these styles a little more, you can move over to the Format tab. Select the area you want to change, and then change the fill or outline of the object. Here I can change the fill of the background to a medium purple. And I can change the format of the grid to be filled with a darker purple. Using this same information, I'm going to create a, a pie chart that shows the number of workshops offered based on percentage. To do this, I'm just going to select the names of the workshops and the number offered. Then I move to the Insert tab, click Pie Chart, and then select a 3D pie chart. With pie charts, pieces can be pulled out to have emphasis. Clicking on one and dragging a piece out will separate all of the pieces. Pressing Control Z or clicking the Undo button at the top of the window will slide these back together. To make sure only one piece is selected, click on that piece and then click it again to make sure that the handles are only surrounding that piece. Then click and drag, and that piece is now separated from the pie. To rotate the pie, you can select 3D rotation here at the top. You can rotate the pie along the X axis, or you can tilt the pie on the Y axis. Scatter charts are used to graph two sets of numbers against each other. In this case, we could chart the number of workshops on the x-axis and the number of students on the y-axis. I'll select the two columns with my numbers, go to Insert, then Scatter. Now you can see that the points are scattered unevenly, unlike the line graph. Adding labels to the horizontal and vertical axes is important in these, in these charts. That concludes this tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me here in the IMC at 662-325-6781 or the email address on your screen. For more information on the software workshops offered by the IMC, visit library.msstate.edu workshops.